um, the kind of the no makeup selfie. So that's hugely fascinating, but you know, it's a very short term phenomenon. And so we're not instantly addressing kind of the latest, the latest kind of thing to hit fundraising. And I know just giving kind of changes all the time. What we've been really thinking about is what are some sort of important fundamental questions that we might be able to try and address kind of over a longer period. So that's kind of the type of research that, that we've been doing. Not to say the other things aren't interesting, but just, you know, it's kind of hard to sort of mobilise large data sets to do quantitative research very quickly uh, kind of to, to, uh, yeah, to a kind of academic standard. So those are, these are kind of the types of questions we've been going after. Um, so we did do a survey to ask people, ask donors what determines how much they give to a fundraising page. And these are the answers ranked by uh, the, the, the kind of relative importance attached by the donors. So the most important one they said was the sense that my money will be used effectively, followed by the charity's cause or mission. So these two seem to kind of relate very much to that sort of traditional motivation that I was talking about at the start. Um, so I can make all the slides available, is that useful? You, you, you can take photos if you want. <laughs> Thank you. 
feedback on. So we think in the kind of, you know, in the sort of uh, individual fundraising world, there are kind of different types of fundraisers. There are kind of loan fundraisers who basically sort of seem to decide that they want to raise money during a unique event for their chosen specific charity and they're kind of going to do it on their own. And then there are fundraisers who take part in mass events, either mass events organised by somebody else, like the London Marathon, or kind of mass events organised by the charity, like Race the Love. So they're kind of taking part, raising money, together with lots and lots of other people who are also raising money, either for different charities or the same charities at the same, at the same event. So these two are kind of, you know, potentially different. We can identify them in the data, we can kind of see, you know, what charity people are raising money for, are there other people who are raising money for the same charity and the same event at the same time, and we can think about, you know, how their behaviour and the behaviour of the donors might be affected in different ways by the nature of their fundraising activity. So, for example, it seems like the loan fundraiser, you know, the person who uh, initiates that fundraising activity might have a very high level of motivation and commitment to the cause because they take the effort and take the initiative in terms of engaging in the fundraising activity. You know, the match fundraiser is also committed to the cause but may be drawn in by the event. I mean, so from an outside point of view, the point of these kind of, you know, events like Race for Life is to draw more people into fundraising. But on average, you might think that the type of people who are drawn in, you know, they're, they're committed to the cause, but maybe less committed than if they had to kind of organise their own event. So they're, they're possibly appealing to slightly different types of people. Um, if you're a lone fundraiser, you're kind of making unique solicitation. Whereas if you're a mass fundraiser, there's always a, a, a risk that you're kind of competing with lots of other fundraisers at the same event for the donors. So, you know, I, every year the race of life, I have, you know, several people asking me for money at the same time. And so, in a sense, all these people are competing for, for donations from, from me. Whereas if it's a lone fundraiser, that kind of, that solicitation may come, at, you know, it comes as a sort of a single standalone uh, solicitation, and so it may elicit a different from the from the from the from the donor. So you know they're just you know again you can think these are reasons why the response might be different. So on the other hand, you know the mass fundraisers clearly benefit from the, the huge level of publicity attached to the event, whereas the low fundraiser has to do all the promotion of their events and their cause themselves. So again that might be something that, that affects um, that affects how much they raise. And then there are differences in terms of what people get out of it. So the loan fundraiser is getting presumably a huge amount of personal reward. The mass fundraiser is getting a huge amount of personal reward. And maybe getting a whole load of fun. I mean, the Race for Life is a great event because it's, you know, hugely fun to take part in. Because you're taking part alongside a whole load of other people. And there's something quite, quite nice about that kind of collective fundraising activity that might give you a different level of satisfaction than if you're engaged in some kind of known challenge. So, we just kind of, you know, sort of, I mean, these are kind of extreme characterizations, but trying to draw out the potential differences between these two types of different behavior. And then what we do is go to the data and see, you know, do these types of fundraisers raise different amounts of money? And do they behave differently in terms of kind of whether they go on to kind of repeat the fundraising effect? You know, do these different levels of motivation actually impact on their behavior? So this is kind of preliminary. But we think there are kind of important differences in the behaviours of these two different types of fundraisers. So we've kind of done our best to sort of split fundraisers in the Just Giving sample into kind of these three different types. So there's individual level fundraising, it's this kind of local fundraiser who's doing their own thing for, their, for a unique charity. Then there's a mass event, so there's many fundraisers, but many possible charities. So for example, the London Marathon. Many people are kind of taking part in the London Marathon, raising money for charity, but they're doing it for many different charities. And then there's what we call a charity mass event, which is kind of many fundraisers, but just <coughs> one charity. So the Race for Life. Everybody doing Race for Life is raising money for the same charity, and the event is organized by the charity. So there's a kind of, there's a sort of an inverse relationship going on here between the individual's effort and the charity's effort. I mean, I think, a race for life is kind of quite a big investment for the charity, maybe less kind of effort for the individual. If I'm a loan fundraiser, it's much more effort for me, much less effort for the charity. So we think there's this kind of trade-off. Um, these are kind of very rough figures, you know, so there's a lot of data we've tried to clean and allocate to these different categories. So actually having decimal points is probably gives you a spurious idea of how precise it is. But roughly we've kind of got, you know, there's a minority of individual led and lots of people doing this kind of mass 
fundraising, whether it's kind of for a mass event or a charity mass event. What I think is interesting is the differences in the amounts of money raised across these different types of activities. So the individual led event, the individual, the lone fundraiser raises much more money, you know, in that event compared to the people taking part in the mass events and the charity 